thank you for visiting my channel again. This is Gianni. Today I'd like to talk to you about how I film my bike trips. On YouTube you will find a lot of dedicated channels to filming. Um, they will go through all the details, uh, the equipment you might need and the techniques that you would use. What I thought I'd rather do on my channel is to do something specific to bike touring. So how to make the most of the equipment you have to take memorable footage to bring back home at the end of your holiday. I travel with a folding bike which limits greatly the amount of equipment I can take with me. For filming movies like you can see on my channel, uh, I've always used three main tools. First is the mobile phone, second is an action camera, third is a gimbal which I use for stabilization. A useful way to explain how I film on my trips I thought it would be to just simply follow some of the footage I've taken on my latest trip in Morocco. And for every shot that I took, just try to explain to you how this is best taken with the limited amount of equipment that you will have. Okay, so while we bike tour, most of your time is spent, of course, on the bicycle. So you need a way to take footage uh, that is safe, stable and fast while you're cycling. A GoPro camera or any action camera is just the ideal tool for this and uh, in my experience there are two ways to use it uh, that produce the best uh, results without introducing too much shaking that naturally comes when you're cycling. Uh, one is a chest harness and this is what you see for example in these shots. And the second one is a selfie stick which you can see here. And uh, they're both used in uh, different occasions. So let's begin with the harness and see how to set it up. I wear the harness uh, uh, under my shirt and I just usually leave the shirt unbuttoned so that the GoPro can uh, stick out from my chest. Um, once it is mounted, it is very important uh, to realize one thing. If you want to mount your GoPro completely flat, uh, you know, when you're bent down cycling, a lot of the footage would be too low. So what you need to do, if you just mount it upside down like you see I've done, and then you can just flip it upwards this way, and then you can just check your riding position and make sure that the camera is just pointing straight. When you're riding and you just, uh, you know, you just see something which you would like to capture, and uh, all you need to do, you know, is uh, very safe and quick. You just uh, leave one hand from the handlebar, you just hold your start button for a few seconds, and then I'm ready to just capture, you know, my shot and I just simply push at the bottom of the camera and then I'm back in my riding position, which is safe. And I will have a great, a great shot, which is stable uh, and secure and fast. So at any time, I'm able to just click on my camera and capture the scene in front of me. The action camera mounted on your uh, chest harness is great for a flat terrain. It's great for downhill, but you should never use it when you're going uphill. When you're slow on your pedal, and especially when you're going uphill, you introduce a kind of rocky movement that you can clearly see in this sample footage. Anything with this kind of uh, shakiness uh, is completely useless, uh, even with the best of editing software. Another great use of the chest harness can be seen from this footage. Let's have a look. The action camera mounted on your chest uh, is quite a discreet way uh, to film every time you encounter people on the road and uh, very often you know you can just uh, if you start your camera before you're meeting them uh, while you're away at a certain distance uh, most people will not notice that the camera is rolling and you're able to really capture the moment you know of a conversation uh, of an encounter you have on the road and um, what I also do, and it can be, can be heard in this footage, is the fact that I, I try to capture the sound too. So every time when I'm uh, traveling, I always hold my second mobile phone in the pocket of my shirt. And what I do, I would just start uh, a voice recording on my mobile phone, and then I would save that. And once I get back home and start editing the footage, I would just combine you know, the sound that I capture, the music, and uh, these, uh, you know, memorable encounters that I have with people and put them together. And they really make your videos so much more interesting than if they were just about the scenery that you encounter. Next, we talk of the selfie stick. This is uh, the second option that we use when we're using our action camera. If you mount the camera, like you see in the picture here, flat, uh, you will not be able to take a good image of yourself. 
so what you need to do, you need to tilt it, as you can see from the next picture. A camera tilted anything between 30 and 45 degrees is ideal because you will easily take footage of yourself while you're riding without including in the footage, uh, you know, the selfie stick itself. If you bend it a bit further, uh, that will be included in the image. When I'm riding, as is clearly seen in this image, I just simply hold the selfie stick on my right hand and I lean my right hand on the handlebar and this way I'm able to take uh, uh, some footage of myself riding. This kind of shot, because it's focused on your self-cycling, uh, brings a kind of optical illusion of stability to the entire footage. So even though you know you might be riding slow, the, the selfie stick might be moving in your hand, uh, or the road might be very uneven, you're able to take uh, footage which looks stable because the whole uh, attention is focused on yourself and that will be fixed uh, inside the viewpoint of the camera. Uh, this can be used uh, at the front or like in the picture you can see here, it can also be used on the side. You do this every time you want to include the scenery to your side. And remember, variety is the key in making your video interesting. So again, this is a further option uh, to bring variety to your shots. Finally, to conclude, uh, the selfie stick is your best choice for uphill shots. It's very good in flat terrain in all situations and it's never to be used downhill because of the fact that you're uh, holding it on your hand so you will not be able to hold the handlebar as securely and that would introduce a safety hazard. Okay, before we conclude this action camera section I would just like to go over uh, a few points and um, which I think are crucial in order to be able uh, to make the most uh, of the tools you have. Number one, I would definitely say uh, be familiar with the equipment you use. Uh, the more familiarity you have, the more uh, free you will be uh, to be creative in your shots and uh, to never lose time, you know, just figuring out how things work. So this takes to the second point, which is to be ready. I use the cameras according to the section of road that I'll be traveling on. If I'm going uphill, I know that I will need a selfie stick. If I'm going downhill, if I'm going on the flat, I, you know, I know that I most likely will use the chest harness. So what I will do each time um, I just change section, I would prepare my cameras accordingly. Another point which is worth uh, covering is just uh, be aware that you're filming. So every time you press the button uh, on your GoPro camera, just uh, remind yourself that this is footage you're taking. So try to be a bit more stable on the bike. Uh, if the road is a little uneven and there's some bumps, uh, by all means you can stand up slightly from the saddle and use your uh, bent knees to kind of absorb uh, you know, the extra bumpiness and make the shot more stable. The final uh, minor point which uh, you might not have realized, when I mount uh, the camera on the chest, uh, as I said, I mount it upside down in order to be able to tilt it. As a consequence, the footage that I take with my chest camera will be upside down. At the beginning, you know, the first year I used it, I used to kind of all the time that I was mounting the camera differently, I was just changing the setting. But I figured out this was such a waste of time. So what I'll do, I'll just keep uh, my GoPro in a normal setting. And then once I get home, I will just correct and turn all the shots that are upside down. The next main tool that I use for filming, of course, is the mobile phone. Uh, this is used every time I'm off the bike. And as you can see, what I normally use, it's a, a lanyard, uh, which I just put around my neck. It, it clips uh, to a case that you can put on the phone and there are different types you can find. You just need a tiny loop uh, of plastic that you're able to put uh, the lanyard through. And um, these always sit in my pocket and um, of course the mobile phone is used for still filming. It is used for the audio like I've shown you in the examples where I meet someone on the road. Um, and it's, it's just something very, very useful to have ready in your pocket. The lanyard beyond having the function uh, of securing you know, the phone and uh, avoiding that you drop it uh, has got also uh, another benefit when you're filming with the phone. Uh, if you just use the linear extended, as you can see me doing here, this uh, brings a lot of stability in the shoe that you can take with your phone. And you're able just to use kind of your neck to add stability to the phone when you're filming. Um, also, um, 
Let me just show you uh, one tip that I found out, which is good for stabilization on the phone. When you want to take panoramas, uh, rather than just moving your body, uh, something which is very effective is to just uh, clip your phone like so on your hands and just use this side as a pivot. So you would just push the phone with the other side and just turn it while keeping it very still. This way, uh, you know, you do get a very, very stable movie, which is uh, almost equivalent to having uh, a tripod. All the footage that you can see here was uh, taken um, by holding the mobile phone in my hands. Using the technique of pivoting uh, the iPhone in your hand rather than moving your body. Like I said with the action camera, what is uh, really important is to be aware that you're filming. So do try to be uh, as still as you can in your shots. And always take the time to frame your shots uh, as best as you can. Having your mobile phone attached to the lanyard uh, in your pocket means that it's within very easy reach. And in this situation, as you can see here, for example, uh, there was a coach with horses just crossing the road while I was cycling. Uh, this allowed me to quickly stop, take out the mobile phone very quickly and film this. What the mobile phone is also used for is taking shots uh, of you passing with a bike. Uh, what you use for that is a small tripod. Uh, what you would do, you would just prepare your phone. This can also be done with your uh, GoPro camera, by the way. But you would put your phone, set it on the tripod on the side of the road. Uh, and then you would take, uh, you know, a pass of the bike, which is either way. What I normally do in this occasion, because it takes a little bit of time to set up, um, I would take two shots, one shot of me coming down one way and one shot coming the other side. And I would use them uh, in different parts of the movie. Uh, when I create my movies, I try to have them in chronological order because they are about the travel that I take from one place to the other. Uh, but in this occasion, for example, you know, I don't want to put the two shots together in the same place. Uh, that would be too obvious. So I do try to use them uh, a little bit spaced out. Uh, tripods you can use. Uh, I, I think this is an excellent one that I have from Manfrotto. And it's just a metal, uh, you know, little tripod. And I can attach uh, my gimbal to this as well. So I can use it for shots with the gimbal. And uh, otherwise you can buy some kind of attachments which are very cheap and you will find on uh, Amazon or any other uh, online store. And uh, by having this attached to the tripod mount, you can then uh, clamp, you know, and use it uh, to just put your phone, you know, in here. And you would have to find, of course, uh, the right size one uh, according to the mobile phone you use. Something which I've used in the past as well um, is a little tripod like this. Um, and uh, it's called a Joby, I forgot the name. Uh, what this does, uh, because of the flexible uh, three legs, it allows you to wrap it around things. And uh, I haven't actually used it that much, but you know, it can be useful in places where you have tree, uh, your branches, you have uh, a fence where you would be able to use this uh, and maybe you would not be able to use, uh, you know, a more regular tripod like this one. Finally, another a little thing which I think is uh, very, very useful to bring is um, some sort of uh, um, lanyard which you can have on your wrist. Uh, this again attaches, you know, to, to a tripod mount. So, for example, on my gimbal, you know, I can attach this and I can then um, put this one around my wrist. And when I'm holding my phone with a gimbal, you know, I don't run uh, the risk of dropping everything. As an example, you can see a couple of shots that were taken using a tripod by the side of the road. The last tool I use and something that I recently purchased uh, is a gimbal. In the last year, these have become much more affordable and the batteries are lasting longer and longer. Uh, my Osmo Mobile 2, for example, has a battery that lasts uh, for about 15 hours. Setting up the gimbal takes a little bit more time than simply taking out your phone and uh, holding it with your hands, but the quality of the image, of course, is uh, greatly improved. Putting a lanyard around my wrist, I'm also able to use the gimbal with the mobile phone mounted while I'm cycling, and I would use it, like in this example, you know, to take the shot of the landscape passing by on my right side as I cycle. If you carry a gimbal, you also have the possibility of shooting great hyperlapses, motion lapses and time lapses, which again will add a uh, good variety to your movie.
It is worth mentioning, of course, uh, drones. In the last few years, they're becoming more and more popular. Uh, they're becoming smaller and they're becoming more affordable. They allow you to take fantastic aerial footage, which of course would be a great add-on uh, to your travel movie. Ideally, I would love to be able to bring a drone with me and uh, be able to take those shots. But I find that at this point in time, um, there's still uh, a lot of limitation to them. The main one for me being the fact that the batteries uh, run out very quickly. When we are cycling, it is always a challenge to be able to recharge batteries for our gadgets. So having a drone where a battery runs out in the matter of 5-10 minutes, I think at the moment is a great limitation for cycling. Also, despite uh, having become smaller and smaller in size, uh, you have to bear in mind that when you're cycling, you would probably want to take them boxed in order to protect them. And uh, there's always to consider the fact that you're not only taking uh, the drone itself, but you would have to take uh, battery packs, uh, cables, um, all things that in the end will add up and make your luggage much more heavy and bulky. I hope I was able to explain how I shoot my movies. Taking footage while you're traveling is of course uh, one of the main parts of making your movie interesting. The next one, uh, which I will cover uh, hopefully in a future video, is about uh, editing and adding music to your movie. Thank you for watching. Do leave comments or tips on how you film your movies and subscribe to my channel for more bike-related touring videos.